Hello chess friends and welcome to Zard of Chess channel and welcome to my series the mathematical calculations and geometries in chess. So this video I think is going to be very very important for you to see because in this video we are going to change our way of thinking in chess. So it's really important to visualize a little bit different the chessboard than usual because the the chessboard is really really important to see in this way that I've already prepared for you. You have to see your chessboard through this the little square, through this big square, and through this red line, which divides really the um, the the board into half of the boards. And uh, when you visualize uh, this uh, chessboard in that this particular way, it's very easy to uh, create uh, some plans in your middle game because, as I said, the planning skills in the middle game are the most most uh, important things in chess because you can maybe well, you can maybe really uh, try hard on your openings but then maybe you get this particular position and then you don't know what to do where should where should I attack and uh, what what should I go um, play in the continuation of the game so let's see now this uh, this first of all let's see our, uh, this uh, little square here in the center it's the squares of course uh, d4 e4 d5 and e5 and uh, here we can see that uh, the pawn structure is um, is a little bit simplified because we have only one pawn and it's this white pawn on e4 and it means that we have the so-called dynamic pawn structure because uh, the pawn structure in the center is not uh, cemented it's not blocked it's not static you see both of the sides have the possibility to push pawns here on d5 and uh, from white's perspective white can also push the pawn on d4 so there are uh, there is this certain dynam um, dynamicity in the middle game and that's why we should really occupy the squares with our own pieces because uh, because of the threat of white maybe to push the pawn on d4 we should really watch to occupy this important d4 square so that's that's our goal here this d4 square in order to occupy it but uh, there is this also um, um, other thing that you have noticed by watching this big square. When you watch this big square, uh, you have to see that your opponent has really uh, showed you with the pawns d3 and e4 the direction of his attack. So the same thing here from Black's perspective. With the pawns here on d6 and c uh, c5, we have also a sort of a, a directed pawn structure and here we should really coordinate our, our attack. So I'm showing this one because uh, some of us would maybe go maybe with ideas uh, knight on e8 and push the pawn on f5 but that would be wrong because we have uh, really really the pawn structure here with this d6 and e5 which is really showing us the direction of the attack so our attack should be really coordinated on the queen side and not on the king side that's uh, really really important to notice because uh, as said you have to you have to play um you have to play with your pawn structure you don't you cannot mess this one up because uh, here as i said the pawn structure is really showing the direction and um, you should re really really be fast in your attack here on the queen side so in the destructive game that i wanted to um, show you here from uh, in this position it's a game played by vladimir fedosev against uh, anish giri anish giri here with the black pieces and you see now uh, that uh, Anish Giri is going to coordinate his attack simply on the on the queen side by pushing the pawn here on b5, b, b4, and similar ideas. This um, red uh, red um, line that I've uh, also prepared here for you. Uh, it's really important to notice when your opponent has uh, occupied your other si uh, side of the board. So it means when you see that your opponent has maybe. Uh, place the knight, uh, create sort of a knight outpost, or push the pawn on the other sa side of your board. It means on your fifth rank, on your sixth rank. You should really try to kick away or solve the problems uh, with this pawn. So let's see now how Anish Giri uh, played this game. I think it's a very instructive chess game. Here uh, he played uh, rook on b8 immediately with the preparation to push the pawn on b5. And I'm going to leave this uh, to uh, to central. 
uh, two central squares here with with this uh, small square and and this uh, big square just in order to show you how really important it is to continue in this way that uh, Anish Kiri also continued in in his game so here you see f4 was played by Fedosev. he also just pushed the pawn here immediately on the king side because as i said his direction of the, of the pawns is showing him that he should really uh, coordinate his attack on the king side so now uh, knight on e8 was played by anish kiri also the idea to transpose the knight on the square c7 which is also supporting the queen side and supporting also uh, here uh, this potential b5 move so here a4 was played knight on d4 as said the maybe white's idea in uh, maybe two three moves would have been this move d4 so we are occupying really this uh, important central square because uh, it was not possible from black's perspective to push the pawn d5 so that's why we have to close the center with the move knight on d4 and now it's really really hard for for white to kick away uh, this knight from d4 uh, it's basically can only happen if white plays the move c3 but the c3 would also weaken here this uh, pawn structure on the queen side and of course we are we are according uh, we have already uh, prepared this attack on the queen side with the move b5 and b4 so here um castling was played by white and now knight on c7 you see again with the preparation to push the pawn on b5 here we have g4 and you see white is simply coordinating the attack on the king side here a6 again with the preparation b5 rook on b1 and now bishop on d7 still a developing move and now knight on g3 and now finally b5 uh, a takes b5 a takes b5 and i'm not going to show you all of this uh, tactical possibilities i just want you to see this game from this uh, strategical point of view uh, just uh, to show you how you should really make progress in your in your game when when we have such a pawn structure in the center so here knight on e2 was played and now you see anish kiri simply plays straight forward with the move b4 and now f5 and now we have the position uh, that i've talked about here we have uh, white has already occupied our other uh, side of the board so it means this problem has have to be solved it uh, cannot stay like this we have to really really challenge now this f5 pawn uh, and of course here anish giri played immediately e6 so uh, it's really really instructive i think because um, he is not allowing his opponent to make progress here on the king side already we have now fi uh, occupied uh, the other side of the board by opponent here with the move knight on d4 and with the pawn here on b4 so as said uh, here anish giri played very well i think and here with the e6 he at least kicked away uh, some potential pawn breakthroughs here on the king's side. so here knight on d4 was played and now c takes d4 uh, kicking away the bishop bishop on f4 and now e5 uh, e5 also an important move kicking away the bishop creating a tempo bishop on d2 was played and now bishop on f3 and this is now again let's watch now this uh, pawn structure in the center so it's really important now uh, the position has now uh, dramatically changed we have now this block pawn structure and we have when we have block pawn structures in the center you see we had first this so-called dynamic pawn structure with with only one pawn in the center now uh, this pawn structure in the center uh, the d3 and e4 and this e5 and the d4 pawns are again showing us the direction so it means again that uh, black is going to coordinate his attack on the queen side and it means also that uh, white is going to coordinate his attack on the king side but uh, when we have this static pawn structure in the center it means it, uh, no pawns can be pushed anymore in the center then we can go for positional trades of pieces so whenever uh, you have the cer certain staticity in the game you should really watch for, for uh, positional uh, trades of pieces so it means anish giri played here very well with the move bishop on f6 and now we could really go for positional trades of pieces here through the square uh, g5 so the trading off the dark square bishop because you see we have dark square uh, pawns on the dark squares it means that this dark square bishop is not so good so it has to be traded for a good uh, bishop and it's it's this dark square bishop by white so i'm i'm really hoping that i'm 
I'm not showing you now too much information. I don't want to be uh, too. Uh, I don't want it to create really a too complex video. But uh, I hope you realize these ideas because uh, the pawn structures in the center they're um, they're changing all the time. And whenever that happens, uh, it's a new position and it's a new new ideas in the game. So you see, uh, let's see now the continuation here. King on h2 was played now. B, uh, b3. You see again Anish Giris just simply continuing uh, his play on the queen side. And now we have rook on a1. Here bishop on b5 was played and now rook on a3 we have b takes c2 queen takes on c2 now knight on a6 and uh, you see now how important it was uh, this transposition of the knight the knight here on a6 uh, the starting square was on f6 then it went in the game through e e8 and then after that on the c7 and now on, on a6 because we want to fix it here on c5 and attacking this uh, d3 weakness so i think it's a very 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 great game here by Anish Giri. I I really loved it, and it's a game played uh, in this tournament. Vikanze, uh, Tata Steel uh, in 2019. Here B4 was played, but now you see Anish Giri. As said, he goes now for this uh, positional trade of pieces because we have this static pawn structure in the center. We have Rook on F3. Now Rook on B6. We have uh, Queen on A2, and now Bishop on f uh, f4 very strong move uh, now we're creating uh, some more tempos here bishop takes uh, e takes f4 and now uh, knight on uh, knight on e2 and now finally knight takes on b4 with an attack on the queen still we have this uh, d3 weakness uh, queen on d2 was played and now very strong move also d5 here uh, knight takes on f4 was played knight takes on uh, d3 we have knight takes on uh d5 and now queen on uh, d6 with a check here the rook covered with g uh, uh with g3 and here the queen takes and here uh knight takes on b6 was played but it's uh completely winning here for for black because black has a very very nice coordination with the pieces again creating now an attack on the knight so knight on d5 was played and now bishop on uh, c4 here we have f6 uh, with the preparation to play the queen here on h6 but now simply taking out this uh, knight which is the key defender of this f6 now queen takes on uh, d3 was played and now bishop on e6 uh, king on uh, g1 and here bishop on uh, c4 with the deflection motif of the queen so that's why here queen on f3 and here uh, d d3 was played okay uh, white tried to counter attack with e5 but here queen takes on e5 queen take queen on uh, e3 we have now doubling up uh, here on the e file and in this position fader save resigned so as said the uh, the most important thing here was to realize the spawn structure in the center in this little square and in this big square so let's see now another example here again we have the same idea uh, you see we have uh, again by black uh, here the pawn in the center so it's a little bit reverse position from white's perspective but still uh, the pawns are really showing us the direction of attack and here the instructive game it's played it is played by Vishwanathan Anand against Olivier Tuzan and here again with the same idea rook on b1 e we want to create an immediate attack here on the queen side here a a5 was played uh, black is trying to uh, at least block somehow the potential pawn breakthrough on the queen side but here uh, anand simply continued with a3 here we have h6 uh, preventing uh, some pinning ideas here on g5 here b4 was played a takes b a takes b here bishop on e6 and you see Anand plays just straightforward b5 and uh, has uh, really, really made really great progress here on the queen side knight on e7 was played and now bishop on b2 developing here the bishop it's also important here queen on uh, d7 was played and now rook on e1 and uh, this rook on e1 it's uh, it's very important because here after bishop on h3 uh, well uh, here black tried uh, to trade off the bishops which is the key defender of, of white's king and then make really, really some mess with these two knights and with the queen here on uh, around the white's king so that's why uh, rook on e1 was a good preparation and now white can uh white can go here bishop on h1 because we had sort of a pin here on the rook on f1 so 
Knight on g4 was played and now queen on b3. Anand has finished now the development here. Uh, king on h7 was played and here knight on uh, e4. The idea is of course to play the move knight on g5 with, uh, with the double fork, uh, with the reload uh, tactic here. Uh, knight on g5. Uh, if pawn takes then we have knight on g5 with the fork on the king and the bishop. So that's why uh, queen on f5 was played and now Anand just uh, managed to get what he wanted. He gets now his pawn breakthrough you see we want to uh, crack the position here around this three uh, three pawns here queen on h5 was played now simply b takes um, c7 here f5 was played with an attack on the knight knight takes on d uh, d6 you see and now f4 uh, but it's i think it's already too late here for black because anand has also the possibilities in, in some occasions to just push the pawn here anand uh, simply takes another pawn <coughs> <coughs> we have f takes g3 and here h takes g3 and now here a strong idea by black he wanted to uh, now anand to take uh, and if uh, rook takes, then we have this motif, uh, rook takes on f3 with, uh, uh, by getting rid of this key defender of this h2 square to create checkmate here with the queen and the knight on h2. But that was not possible because Anand played the counterattack here with uh, knight on h4. Here we have g5 again, uh, black is trying just to get rid of this knight, but here um, Anand hand has this... Um, intermediate move with the queen on e4 here king on g8 was played and now bishop on f3 creating the pin on the knight that's why bishop on h3 was played but now simply bishop takes on g4 bishop takes on g4 knight on uh, g2 now we have again a very nice defender around the uh, white's king and here rook on um, a6 was played here bishop takes uh, knight on c8 we have now uh, c5 it's now easy for anand to find the best moves you see anand has now uh three four pawns even more than uh, than black so that's why here it's a completely winning game for white but let's see the continuation rook on uh, a7 was played bishop takes on g7 uh king takes on g7 now knight on uh, e uh, e3 attacking the knight the bishop here bishop on d7 was played and now simply straightforward attacking the bishop bishop on h3 was played and now knight takes uh, bishop takes and now queen on d4 with a double attack on the on the king and the rook and in this position uh, black resigned so as said you again uh, it was very important to for anand uh, to create this uh, fast attack on the queen side with the progress uh, here with the move after a5 here a3 then here really uh, b4 because as i said here the pawns are really showing us the direction of the attack and this is how you should play in these types of pawn structures in the center so in the last game i wanted to show you now uh, one of my games i played a couple of days ago uh, against um, uh, my new club colleague and uh, here again we have the situation here by by uh, by white that he has already showed with this uh, direction of the bishop and with this direction of the, of the, of of the pawns here on uh, e3 and f4 the direction of the attack but uh, the main main difference is that he has now already pushed the pawn on a4 so the idea for me to maybe play rook on b8 and then uh, to play the move b5 wouldn't be so good but what i realized in this game that uh, if we watch now this big square uh, you see again we have now a sort of uh, dynamic position because we don't have uh, any pawns here in the center so it means we should really somehow occupy with pieces this central positions or play compact uh, with our minor pieces or with our rooks but uh, what i've noticed that uh, white white has left here really really too much space uh, because he has created sort of a uh, pawn structure that's um, uh, pointing on two directions and you see there then you leave uh, too many space if you create such pawn structures so that's why i wanted to attack uh, this space immediately and i pushed the pawn on d5 here bishop on uh, e2 was played and now knight on c6 casting and now, now you see i'm just attacking now uh, this uh, this squares uh, that are really really uh, free here in the center so here queen on 
uh, e1 was played now knight on g4 again i hope you realized i coordinated my attack on on the queen side here because as i said uh, my opponent showed with his uh, with his pawns the direction of his attack so that uh, he showed me that he's going to coordinate his attack on uh, on the king side so that's why here knight on g4 with an immediate attack on the pawn here on c2 here bishop on d1 was played and here now bishop on f5 you see creating another attack that's why uh, knight on a3 had to be played and now knight on e4 we have uh, e6 uh, d3 pardon me knight on uh, c3 was played bishop takes and now d takes uh, c3 here we have um, uh, e4 and now bishop on g5 with an attack on the on the knight knight on c4 and here i all, all immediately took uh, the knight which is the key defender because uh, here we have really really a weakness on the square on d4 and here my attack uh, uh, was coordinated also on the square uh, on the spawn on c2 and uh, this bishop is a little bit stuck to the defense on this uh, uh, pawn on c2 so that's why I took off uh, took off uh, first the key defender of this uh, d4 square so that's why rook takes on f3 was played now bishop on d4 and you see now the pawn structure in the center you see now this big square with this two pawns that we have really really now again sort of a static position with the pawns it's hard to push pawns here from from white's perspective or black's perspective on the queen side so that's why again we should really search for positional trades of peace so it means i would love to give up maybe this bishop for this knight uh, on the c4 just in order to continue the game with an attack on the c2 because as i said the bishop is not good uh, placed uh, it's not well placed because it's only a defender it's not an attack and, and just defending this pawn on, on c2 so that's why here king on h1 was played but now e5 i wanted to block a little bit uh, uh, white's position so if bl bl white would have taken then i have also the possibilities to place the knight here on c uh, c6 then after that i can take take this pawn on on e5 so that's why my opponent pushed uh, f5 here i played f6 here uh, h4 was played you see again i'm pointing you out that white is just coordinating his attack on the king side because of the of this uh, pawn direction here i played king on uh, h8 uh, g4 was played and now queen on e7 i finished my development here queen on g3 and now rook on g8 uh, now i'm wanted to place my rook on this uh, on the same file as the queen and here uh, knight on uh, knight on e3 was played and that's now a position which i uh, which i wanted to happen and now i simply took out this knight you see because uh, white has uh, only all the spawns on light squares uh, it means uh, that the light square is a little bit blocked out by its uh, own pawn so it means the only mobile uh, minor piece that white had here it was the knight on uh, e3 so that's why i decided to, to get rid of it here rook takes on e3 was played and now g5 you see now the pawn structure in the center it's again a little bit uh, blocked uh, you see now these squares but it means that we can now really occupy it uh, with the knight maybe knight on c6 and then uh, knight on d4 we can really occupy this center square h5 uh, was played and now i kind of felt uh, i cannot lose this game because now you see i solved my problems on the um on the king side because after the move h5 there's no way for this bishop to go uh, and participate in the attack because it simply blocked out and uh, it was uh, it was now really really a bad bishop position so here queen on uh queen on d6 was played then th th that was my preparation just to protect uh, this uh c3 pawn because the threat was of course uh queen on uh queen on uh, e1 with an attack so uh, here rook on um, e2 was played now of course h6 uh, improving just more the position here queen on e1 and here queen on uh, d4 queen on uh, queen on f2 was played and i just decided to take out the queen rook takes on f2 knight on c6 and now king on g2 and you see now i've really placed the knight on this very active square uh, the bishop is still blocked out by its own pawn and here my opponent decides to play the move a a5 and here now 
uh, when the position is static now i want to create some mobile pawns now i want to crack open the position on the queen side and here uh, as said uh, you see because i realized this position uh, that uh, my attack is going to go on the queen side now it's finally time to make this progress on the queen side but you see i had to first solve my problems because white was a little bit faster on the attack and now with move b5 i can play this move so my opponent played b4 he wants also to crack open somehow the position but i simply took uh, c takes b4 we have a uh, rook on um, b1 now of course knight on c6 simply defending rook on b3 here rook on d8 was played rook on b1 and you see uh, all of these pieces by white are simply paralyzed here rook on d4 and now we have another target it's the pawn here on a5 here rook on a1 uh, rook on um uh, c8 was played uh, king on f3 but uh, really really white pieces are too paralyzed i created a very nice blockade knight on d8 was played king on e3 and here rook on c6 uh, with the preparation to lift uh, the rook here on, on a6 and then uh, support the attack with knight on b7 uh, bishop on f3 rook on a6 i said uh, rook on f1 here knight on uh, b7 with an attack on the pawn on a5 rook on a2 uh, rook takes here rook takes on a5 knight takes on a5 and here my opponent played the move uh rook on a1 and here i find the found a very nice idea i played the move b3 i left here this uh, uh, knight hanging on a5 but here after rook takes on a5 now i have uh, uh b takes uh, b takes c2 and you see now white's problem he cannot uh, participate in the defense with the king because the king is cut out by these two pawns and also this bishop is also cut out uh, but by this pawn on c2 so that's why my opponent decided to bring the rook in the defense and here i simply played b4 because uh now when i connect the pawns on the third rank uh, there's no way that uh, white can prevent these pawns from promotion so in this position my opponent resigned and i was very happy because uh, it was a live streamed game on on, on an internet uh, and uh, as said i think i played here a very nice blockade against this light square bishop which was a bad bishop uh, till the end of the game okay i hope you enjoyed this uh, video we're continuing with this uh, with this uh, visualization uh, progress in, in chess games because i hope you realize these ideas uh, how you should make progress uh, in the middle game how you should really look at the board uh, by this uh, just see this um, small uh, a small square this big square you should really try to make progress uh, on your opponent's other side of the board so that are the main strategical elements in a chess game and as said we're continuing with the series the mathematical calculations and geometries in chess okay uh, meanwhile you can watch my other um, videos from the series and you can also watch my how to spot chess tactics uh, for, from the series in which i show you uh, common ideas when when it's, it's possible to create uh, tactical possibilities and you can also subscribe to my channel thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course